Abraham and know Abraham knew him that's why we know he's the angel of the Lord so yes Jesus leaves us with no question he is divine there's no question that's not what we're asking we are asking where does God say I am three in one Jesus said he spoke with Abraham in person Chris Chris where does God say I'm three in one what you're identifying is people persons yeah. with divinity or divine yeah. characteristics yeah. like Melchizedek we yeah. earlier explained earlier on where does God say he's three in one no, it doesn't say that explicitly it doesn't say that okay. very good where does he say that he's not five in one he doesn't say that explicitly no so in progressive revelation it is possible that God reveals that he's five in one that he has a brother of God too and a daughter of God too progressive revelation cannot predict, contradict prior revelation how is five in one God contradict Three in one God. Tell me. What? Where does <laughs> Bible contradict you. that God doesn't have a daughter who's also God? What? Where does the Bible contradict in saying that God does not have a daughter who is also God? He doesn't say that. So where does he contradict? Because God has revealed himself through Jesus who is God. Uh, no. God has not God. revealed himself as three in one. As you've identified yourself. Yes, he has. So where, Jesus said he's divine in many places. No, where, Holy Spirit is given where does he say he's three in one? The question is, is he three in one or five in one? Okay, my friend, let me explain the Trinity, yeah? No, no, no I'm no, not no, asking no, you to no, explain no, no, the Trinity. No, you're, you're I'm saying you progressive revelation means yeah. God can reveal later that he also has a that daughter who is also God. Yes? By revealing that he has a daughter who is also God, how does it contradict the revelation? He has already revealed his uh, nature, which is in Triune. When it comes to Abraham, he's already revealed that he's God and there's no son of God. How does the revelation given to Abraham contradict the revelation in the future that God is five in one? Tell me, how does the revelation given to Abraham contradicts the revelation in the future that God is five in the one? The fact that you're referring to something that hasn't actually happened no, no. and saying... Progressive revelation, my friend. Progressive revelation. That's what you believe. Yes. God, it is possible in your belief, can reveal that yeah. he has a daughter of God. Okay, if we say it's possible, that doesn't mean it is. According to your belief, God can be a he five in one, a twenty in five, whatever. It. What he has revealed is that he is a triune God. No, My no, friend, what he, he can do... He has is not is revealed, he has not revealed that he's three in one. He has, yes. There is nothing in this scripture which says these three gods are one. Okay, listen, let me explain. What he's doing is he's trying to say like, uh, oh, the Bible doesn't say Trinity, therefore it's a lie or it's a no, 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 let me explain. Where does the Bible even once indicate that the three are one? Quote me a scripture, prove me wrong. Okay, Matthew 28, when it talks about how you baptize, you baptize mm -hmm. in the Holy, uh, Father, the, Holy, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's where they... Quote me the scripture. Go I and... can actually say one, John 5, 7, no, no. but you're Go and baptize. Later. Go and baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Where does it say they are one? Because he's just said you baptize in the three names. If you baptize in the three names, it means they are one God. Okay, if you when you, when people were being baptized, what name would they, they be? They were not baptizing in the three names. That's the, where no, that's before, where that's before, why this verse is considered before, to be a forgery. Yeah, before, what name would they baptize? Oh, wait, wait, wait. When yeah, when people are baptizing. What name would I baptize them? Were they using the three names? No, no, not this. So they were not following Christ's teaching because it didn't exist. They were not baptizing. Read Paul. Read Paul and his and his letters. They were not baptizing in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. That means that means either they were unaware of that teaching or they knew it didn't exist. No. It's, it's possible they, they were baptizing in the name of the Father. So no, no, no. Yeah. The scripture, in your scripture, tells you very clearly they were baptizing in the name of the Father only. They were not baptizing in the name of these three things. No, they baptized in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Did they baptize in the name of the three? Uh, Jesus said that we should baptize in the name of the No, no, no. Did the people, knowing this message from Jesus, mm. baptize in those three names? So your Historically. Argument, your argument that in Acts, they don't explicitly say they baptize in the name What of does it say explicitly? If I understand right, it's the name of Jesus. Right, so they were not baptizing what Jesus said. So they were disobeying Jesus no, Christ. There's, reason, there's good reason to think that they were. No, no. 
when it says explicitly someone was not baptizing the problem is this you go Wait, listen. Okay. Why do you go against explicit verses in the Bible? Wait, wait, okay, listen. The reason why Christians believe in the Trinity is because Jesus says things that are evidently divine. And we cannot ignore those verses. Jesus is 100% human. We believe that because it's evident. Jesus talks about how he, he walked, he slept. He Can prayed. we test it? Can we test it? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let me finish this, my friend. Finish and we will test okay, it. Okay, okay. So if I prove to you that he cannot be divine, okay, then the okay. case will be closed. Jesus says, we believe Jesus is 100% fully human. No one says he is, right? Of the early Gnostics in the early church. But, and then we also believe Jesus is fully divine. And the reason why is because he, he says that he gives people eternal life. He, believe, he says that he has the power to raise the dead. So does Paul. So does Paul. Does that make Paul God? No, but he had that power from Jesus. Wait, wait, wait. Slow Spirit. down, slow down. Yeah. The fact that God gives someone authority to do something, yeah. power to do something, doesn't make them God, does it? Right. If but, God gave power to Paul okay. to raise the dead, does that make Paul God? Whose name was he doing it? Does that make Paul Whose God? Whose name was he doing it? If Paul is doing it in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, okay. would he that make Paul God? No. But what if, if Jesus is the, if Jesus is doing that in the name of no, his God? He does it in his own name. He says you can pray to him in his name. Doesn't Jesus say I cannot do oh, yes. anything myself? In full unison with the Father. Wait. So oh, in whose name is he doing it? In whose name is he doing the miracles? At the Father. There's a full union. There you go. <laughs> same argument. <laughs> same logic. Three. Same logic. <laughs> Jesus has been given authority yeah. to perform miracles. And that to cannot and make him life. God. And to raise the dead. Oh, and to that. raise himself that from cannot... the dead. And to answer your prayers. Excuse me. Where does it say in the Bible? One moment. Three one. Bro brother, brother, yeah, we'll come back to that point. Are you saying, who raised Jesus from the dead? If he indeed died? John 2, 18 to 22, says that I raised myself up. I rebuilt this temple. Doesn't the Bible say God raised him up from the dead? Yes, because they are all God. And on. You still don't understand. Who raised Jesus from the dead? God Jesus. God. Jesus or other than Jesus? But well, let's be more specific. What the Bible God? says God and you're yes. saying Jesus. Jesus Make up your mind. John to, uh, So you're, it's a contradiction then? Does the Bible ever say God raised Jesus from the dead? Says Jesus raised him. No, does it say God raised him? Yes, God did indeed raise him from the dead. So, who raised him? From the dead. God. Who is God? The Son. Oh, the son. The Father. Ah, so that's how it makes sense. So, okay. Right. So who raised him? The Son raised him from the dead. Yeah. Or together made raised him from the dead. It was all of them together, but the Son was apart. Right. So it wasn't himself then. Just like he didn't have. So just like he didn't have. So Chris, yep. just like he didn't have life of himself. He doesn't have life to be given back no, of himself. No, because he is eternal. He has eternal. I know what you're quoting. I know. He is he eternally having life from all of them. Because all of them in and of themselves. So he was life. eternally dependent on all the others. Yeah, they all. So he was eternally imperfect. <laughs> well, listen. The Jews then responded to him. What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? He's talking about rebuilding the temple. Destroy the temple. And, he, and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has been 46 years to build this temple. You are going to raise it in three days. But the temple he spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. And they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Jesus read that again? No, no, read that again. Destroy this temple and I will raise it again for, in three days. And, then they and where does he say he did? They replied, it take 46 years. No, where does he say he did? After he was raised from the dead. By who? This is John. No, by, as raised by the dead by who? Destroy this temple and I will raise it. No, no, he says that, but who raised him? If Jesus says he's going to raise himself from Now the I realize how you misquote scripture. In front of the person, your interlocutor. You said, Jesus said, I raised myself. I just, I just can't No, no, he him. said, I will. I will. But it, the next yeah. verse says, yeah. after he was risen. Who raised him? It doesn't say it's in a passive voice. Elsewhere, it says God raised him. Yes, because Jesus is God. No, no. My friend, Jesus so is not God. He's a part of God in your belief. They're all fully God. Sorry. You know that. Do you believe Jesus is God or part of God? He is fully God. My question is specific. Just ask. Okay. Is, is God. Jesus God is or God. part of God? He is God. Do you not understand my question? Wait, what? You just said he's God. I just said yes, he's God. No. Is Jesus part of God? No, he is fully God. I just answered you. So he is a fully God, not part of God? True. Okay. So Jesus is fully God? Yes. 
How many God is he? One or, 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 or one third? Being fully God. No, he is fully God. He is fully God. If you are fully God, how much God are you? One or half or one third? No, you are fully God. You're when you are fully God, no. brother, please don't give deflection. Thank you. When you are fully something, yeah. are you whole yes. or half or you're quarter? Fully, you're fully divine. Fully means whole. Yes. If you are whole, are you one or less? Well, your one is in Jesus' body. No, no, no. If Jesus is God and is fully God, yeah. is that one fully God or one fully quarter God. fully God or one third one fully God? God yeah. One fully God. So now we have Jesus being one fully God. Yeah. How many gods do you believe in? One. That's Jesus. And Father. No, no, no. And means number two, number three, number four. You've already identified, Chris, you've already identified one fully God. Anything else you say, and is number two, number three, ad infinitum. That's polytheism. You have just identified Jesus as one God fully. Anyone else you add, that's God number two, God number three. Tell me why it's not that case. Because God's nature is unique. That is why. It is simple. But you don't want it. This tripod is God and it's unique. Yes. Yeah, and that's God, right? Yes. If somebody says, you know what, this is unique, it's a mystery, but it's God. Yes. It's 100% God. Yeah, but it's divine. The two gods are Allah and the Quran, right? Both eternal. Sorry? The two gods are the Quran, the eternal. Yeah. Which two gods in the Quran? <laughs> which two gods? <laughs> hang on, hang on, Chris. <laughs> which, which two gods? So we got Quran and Allah. No. <laughs> where, does the, where, does the, where does the Quran say it's God? Say it's God. It says it's eternal. How can it, how can it, how can what's not God be eternal with them? Yeah, I don't get it. I want to understand something. Does the Quran say it is God? No, which doesn't make sense. Why could it, it could hang be on, hang eternal? On. Do you believe the love of God is eternal? God is love. No. Do you believe the love of God, which is his attribute, his nature, it his is, characteristics, do you think is eternal? It's not distinct from God. Is God. Is do you believe God has knowledge? But it's, that is, yeah, is it God eternal? Is God, of his nature. God is love. God is. God do you believe the knowledge of a God is eternal? God is. God of his nature. Is the knowledge of God God? It's part of his nature. God is. Sorry. Do you believe the knowledge of God is eternal? You said yes. Now you have one eternal being called God and you have knowledge of God is also eternal. How many gods do you have so far? You have to, no, that's in the nature. You're talking about the tablet. My friend, yeah. speaker's corner is going to skin you alive with your logical, you know, you know <laughs> stupidity and nonsense. It's not stupidity. Huh? So now tell me, do you believe God is compassionate? Yes. yes. Right. Does God possess compassionate nature eternally? Yes. Is that God? God is compassion. No. Is the compassionate nature of God eternal? Is the mercy of God eternal? You're trying to distinguish God God's mercy. word written yes. on Is God the mercy? From his attributes. God is mercy. Mercy. Is mercy God? No. no. Thank you. Exactly. So the Quran is a speech of God. Even though it's but eternally it's with him, it's God. not God. It's just God. like all the other attributes of God. You just went from attributes to, to speech. Yeah. Speech yeah. is an attribute of God. Quran is the speech of God. Exactly. You didn't know that. No, speech did you? is an output of something. So you didn't like, know that. Is speech an attribute and kindness? Listen, do you know what an attribute is? Yeah. So if I'm a kind person... Yeah. Yeah. Kindness, is kindness is an attribute. Yeah. Yeah. Kindness is an attribute of you. Yeah, so kindness. Is kindness you? No. Exactly. You got it. You got it. You got it. You know, you're making sense now. You got it. So now, in Christianity, the word of God is God. Does it make sense? No. What is the word of God? Is that his characteristics? It's a way of saying. It's a figure of like. Is the word of God his speech? So the word of God is, the word, is the word of God the speech of God? The word of God is a title given to the Jesus. The word yes. was God in Christianity. Yes. When you say word of God, what do you mean by that? Lo the, lo the Logos. The Logos. Logos. To the is the Logos yes. an attribute of God? So the, the Logos was actually written in John to describe the Trinity. He wasn't actually saying the word is like a fourth person of the Trinity. He was using the Logos to describe the nature yeah, it's of the Trinity. It's a descriptive term. Is the
independently. Of course, give him the chance. Is the Logos independently eternal? Not independently. Not without so dependent. Not without Do you agree? Yeah, I would agree. Okay. A God who is dependent is not perfect. So, I actually wasn't disagreeing with you. That you so you agree in Christianity, there are three imperfect gods working together. Because the Logos is the second person of the Trinity, is imperfect because it's dependent. The Father is interdependent as well as Chris said earlier on. So three imperfect gods working together, does it make perfect? So I wasn't disagreeing with you that the... That the I'm glad that you agree with me, Christianity is incoherent. The word, of God, the word of the Quran and Allah couldn't co, co eternally exist. I just demonstrated to you. You have you have different sects of Islam based off of your interpretation. Uh, this has nothing to do with sects and heretical groups. What we're describing is two concepts of God. In a concept of God where there is three gods and yet together, that's what I'm saying. All along. If the Christian said we believe in three gods, we are happy. Believe in three gods, but in the day of judgment, God will question you for that. The Trinity, the Trinity and tritheism are two different things. Okay. Trinity is the belief in how many gods? One. The Trinity is one being three persons. No, Trinity is the belief in how many gods? One. And who is that? Father? Is that the Father? He's one person. No, no. When you say God, okay. God is Yahweh. Yahweh. God is Yahweh. When you say God, is that the Father? Yahweh. Yahweh. No, no, you're not. Is the Father Yahweh? Is the Father Yahweh? No. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit make up Yahweh. Father, the Son, the Holy Yahweh. Right. So the Father is part of God. No, 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 not part. If you made a pie and you cut it a third each, not it. The Father is 100% God, when, the Son is 100% God, the Holy Spirit is 100% okay. God. If you are, if you are 100% God, are you less than one God? One being. Three hang on, hang on. When you identify something as 100% God, 100%? Yeah, 100%. Complete, whole. Is that less than one? That's one. That's one. So the Father is one God. No. So how much of God, hang on, if the Father is not one God, how much of God is He? He's Either He is greater than one God, same as one God, which you say no, or less than one God, which one? So the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit make up... Father individually, how much of God is He? 100% God. So if you're 100% God, that's one God, right? Yeah. The, the Spirit and the Son. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Slow down. So the the if, Father can't be God unless He didn't have the Son and the Spirit. So Father cannot be God without the other two. Yes. So He's dependent on the other two to make Him God. Yeah. That's yeah. not. He's not God. No, God. He's not God. A God. A God that depends on someone else to make Him God is not God by definition. It's a false God by definition. A false God. Yes, Allah is God. You know what? It can actually love us. Look, look. Can you imagine a more perfect God than an independent God? Who is Allah loving? How can He love us? He's not relational. A God that is dependent. A God that is independent. Who is more perfect? The Trinitarian God because he's no, no. relational, he has no, no, no. community in and of himself since the beginning. The Father individually, the Father individually, and the Islamic culture of God, right? When you compare both of them, who is more perfect? No, no, I'm talking about the Father individually. I am allowed and I have the right to talk about him individually. Wait, wait, my friend, what's your name? What's your name? Noel. 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 No, his name is Luke. Luke. I'm Noel. Okay. Okay. Noel and Luke. The father is distinct from the son. Father and Allah. When we compare, who is perfect? So the father has the spirit and the son wholly substituted in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The father is dependent. Allah is independent. Who is perfect here? So he's dependent on God, Look, on himself. When the father is, you said the father cannot be God other than the other two. On, them, on the others. On himself. No, on the others. 
the other persons of the on, on, on others uh, besides himself. That's not himself. Thank you. That's not himself. That's not himself and others. So you have a father who is dependent on others and you have Allah who is independent. Which is a perfect description of God. Who are the others? Are they, are they, are they also That's members of the church? Listen first. Luke, if you have a God who is independent, and if you have a concept of God who is dependent, which is the more perfect concept of God? This one or that one? The one which is dependent, you know in your heart. Luke, in your heart you know a being who is independent compared to being who is dependent the independent is perfect. So you disagree with one second? So you disagree? So you're saying a being who's dependent is more perfect than a being who's independent. He's dependent on himself. No, on the no, no, listen. The concept of a being that is dependent on others. The father is not dependent on but what's the difference? Okay, what, okay, what you, okay, so if you want to talk about independence and dependency, Allah is dependent on us. No. To, 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 no. To you, are, you are not even in existence. How can he be dependent on you? He has enough in and of himself. Yeah, yeah. Look, on when you and I were so not... No, no, no. Look, when I, I, you and I were not in existence, I'm, how was he dependent on you? He, he, he needs us. Now, how was he dependent on you and I when he we did no not even exist? Look, 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 look. Yeah. If we were not created, because how was it dependent on us? Because he has no relation until he creates us. He is asking. Do you know why this is again? Do you know why this is a very? Do you know why what Chris said? Do you know what Chris said? Doesn't make much sense. If you have a being, if you have a being who doesn't possess the attribute of love and you have other objects like the Son, like the Holy Spirit. Imagine the Father does not possess the attribute of love. Can the Father love the Son, love the Holy Spirit?